Hey there, I'm Josh Clark, and this is Brain Stuff. And this is the particular Brain Stuff where I explain to you what a Crookes radiometer is, and I even explain how it works. So if you've been alive in 1870, you would know that the Crookes radiometer was the must-have toy of the year. Uh, it was marketed as something called a light mill, which will make a lot of sense in a second. So for those of you who've never seen a Crookes radiometer, basically it looks like a paper-thin, see-through glass light bulb that's sealed with a partial vacuum inside, a shaft coming up, and arrayed around that shaft, four little veins on a frictionless rotor. The veins have a dark side and a silvery reflective side. Okay, got it? That's the Crookes radiometer. That's what it looks like. And since it's sealed off in a glass bulb, it shouldn't be subject to air currents. In fact, its inventor, Sir William Crook, came up with this whole thing for that very reason. See, he was looking to measure thallium, which is very, very lightweight, without air currents messing with his measurements. He figured out that when you put a Crookes radiometer in the presence of sunlight, the weather vane starts to inexplicably move around. Now, Crookes could have very easily just shouted, witchcraft, witchcraft, and like hid under his bed, but he didn't because he was a scientist, so he sought to explain it. And he came up with a proposal called the pressure of light. See, what Crookes thought was going on is the sunlight hitting the weather vane was pushing it around. Basically that photons, the tiniest packets of light, were hitting the reflective surfaces and causing the vane to spin. Get it? But it was wrong. And here's why. If Crookes had been correct, the reflective side of each weather vane should have been pushed along and the vane would have spun in the direction of the silver side. Well, anybody who's ever messed with a Crookes radiometer knows that when you put it in sunlight, it spins the opposite direction, with the darker side of each vane leading the way. So what's going on here? What's the deal? Is it witchcraft after all? Maybe. See, in 1879, a guy named Osborne Reynolds, which is a pretty awesome name, proposed what is considered the blue ribbon hypothesis explanation of what happens with a Crookes radiometer. And what he proposed was thermal creep or thermal transpiration. Now, remember a Crookes radiometer is a glass bulb that's sealed off and it's sealed because it's containing a partial vacuum inside. Now, because it's a partial vacuum, thermal creep is allowed to occur. It also means that the gases inside, any air that's still left, is evenly distributed. That's how nature loves everything, even Stephen. But when you place the Crookes radiometer in sunlight, you're introducing heat in the form of light. And when you do that, remember that each of the four veins has a silvery reflective side and a darker black side. And that darker black sides tend to absorb light and hence heat, which means that you have one side of a vein that's hotter than the other side. And when that happens, nature likes to even things out, remember, by sending colder air on the silvery side around to the darker side to cool it off, cool things down. When it does that, the balance of gases changes. It builds up on the darker side, increasing the air pressure there and decreasing the air pressure on the silvery side. Got it? That's part one of thermal creep. The second part, is that as the cold air moves, air particles move around to the warmer side. And sometimes they displace some of the warmer molecules which go to the other side. Now by definition, warmer air molecules have more energy, they're more excited, and so they strike the vein with more force. They're striking the black side of the vein, which on the other side meets very little resistance because there's lower air pressure and the vein spins around with the dark side leading. Hence, the Crookes radiometer is explained once and for all by me. And if this didn't make your head explode and made your thirst for Crookes radiometers huge, you can get them on the internet. We want to hear what you think about Crookes radiometers. You should leave us a comment in the comment section below. Say, hey, say Crookes radiometers are awesome or Crookes explanations are full of it. Or it is witchcraft after all, who knows? Well, we want to hear from you either way. And if you like this video, there's plenty more where that came from. You can keep up with us on Twitter and Facebook. You can subscribe to us here. It'll probably improve your life tremendously. And you can check out our awesome, super neato packed website, 
brainstuffshow.com. Check it out.